Hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of the Moose Hunt Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Chris Richards, and I'm excited to bring you a very exciting episode today for episode nine of the Moose Hunt Podcast. This episode is going to be a brief recap from camp number one from the 2022 September Maine Moose Hunt. We're going to sit down with a few of the guides, Bryce Morrison, Eric Poland, Dylan Stevens, and videographer Isaac Petrie, and discuss the highs, the lows, the challenges, the successes of the week, live from camp, having a great time, and really celebrating the culmination of an amazing week in the woods. We hope these stories are entertaining, informative, educational, and also can give you a glimpse into what it's like to be at Moose Camp in Northern Maine. As always, thank you for tuning in. God bless you all, and we hope you enjoy this episode. End of season one of the 2022 Moose Hunt here in Northern Maine. Uh, we just wrapped up the week, really excited, got a bunch of the people here. We're at camp celebrating a successful hunt. I'm joined right now by Eric Poland, Bryce Morrison, and Isaac Petrie, who uh, each had ex exciting hunts this week, and really looking forward to getting into the discussion about how this um, all went down, how their hunts went, exciting things, kind of get an in-depth summary of those, and we're also going to rotate some other guys in. Um, if you hear some music in the background and other talking, it's uh, it's because we're bringing this live from camp, raw and real. So we're really excited, guys. How are you doing? Doing great. How are you? Yeah, we're doing good. Fantastic, Chris. Having an awesome time, man. It's been a it's been a great week, a challenging week, I'd say, weather-wise, but uh, a lot of perseverance, a lot of uh, still awesome, awesome success, and uh, some great memories made. And so, really want to jump right in kind of get sharing some stories. Bryce, you had a really, really awesome group to hunt with. Um, I had a large group, great hunt. Um, I had a group of four people, so counting myself, I was hopping through the woods with five guys. Yeah. The weather was up and down the first couple days, rainy, cold, but I will say we didn't have any 80 degree days, you know, nothing like that which, you know, opposing winds lets you get into different spots, try different spots from different sides. Um, which one do you want? I'd say the weather was good without leaving a pile of scent and a pile of, you know, noise right. along with it. Right. You know, similar thing with me. Um, we did a, a little bit of dual calling and stuff. Had four guys. When you go in and you start thinking about that number of legs, there's a benefit to the number of eyes in the woods, I guess, but that can be a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did your hunt progress? I know how it ended, but like, kind of walk us through, um, like, the build up. You know, I'd say, I'd say really the first day of the hunt was really gauging what we could do, right? How they walked, how they sounded. Uh, I had a game plan, and I ended up having to hunt a plan C because plan A and plan B. I mean, that's one thing I'll say as a, as a moose hunter, you can't just have one plan. Oh, yeah. You can't go into a spot with one plan. You got to have a plan A, B, C, D, E, I mean, down the line. Um, it, you can't just have one plan. So plan C, um, uh, you know, it didn't pan out, but it was a good walk, good hunt. Um, really got a good feel for what my guys wanted to do. And it was pouring rain the entire time. So really got to show what they were made of, uh, what they could handle and, and what kind of gear they had. I will <laughs> say, I feel like we had some awesome hunters this week that persevered pounding rain we got a go torrential downpour <laughs> nope my guys we get out of the truck it was raining before we even got out of the truck get out of the truck they threw their gear on and we went and hunted mm -hmm. i mean rain's good we, we like i said before we even started that day is like we kill moose in the rain mm -hmm. i mean keeps your scent down keeps the noise down as long as you're not wearing ring gear that sounds like a blue plastic tarp, you know, <laughs> you, you know, you can you can get into these places and make it happen. Uh, I'd say particularly that my my main plan for the area I hunted totally changed once I saw how many people were in there and how they were hunting. There was just traffic, a lot yeah. of a lot of calling noise that I didn't want to hear. And um, but no, day one was was like cutting our teeth. Yeah, yeah, yep. But um, I'd say after the first day, the you know the rain subsided, and I, a couple clients that were really noisy. So I was I was working. I'm a I'm a fast walker. Right. So 
right i had to like super slow myself down so if i can walk super slow i know they're work walking at like a somewhat normal pace mm -hmm. so they can be quiet so being quiet is key but um yep throughout the week we got into some new spots found some fresh sign found some new sign and you know the, the calling sequences definitely had to change because i would say i started out with a little more cow calling than than bull grunting and just the responses I were getting were indicative of big bulls with cows and satellite bulls on the outside coming in quiet sneaking. Right. Which is what we saw. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that was pretty obvious. When you got little guys sneaking in, trying not to get beat, you know, that tells you there's something big close by that's, that's not talking. That's right. Yeah. So, later in the week, uh, one of the other guides... Tommy, he's been on here, he gave me a pep talk the night before, and he's like, bulls are with cows, you gotta go in there raking and grunting. You gotta he's be like, aggressive. You gotta be aggressive. Yep. And so that next day, I had the wind for a spot that we had hunted in the afternoon. So we went for an afternoon walk, really, more than anything. Right. And found fresh sign that wasn't there when I scouted, and thought there was probably two or three different bulls on camera, and I was just waiting for a good wind to get in there. And we got in there, the wind was right, it was dead quiet. And I got between two fresh pits, and I raked and grunted, and a cow did up. Yep. Which everything I've ever been told about that is, that's a cow with a bull. So I'm like, all right, guys, we got to move in. I got four people with me. I told two of them to stay in the road. I'm like, listen, I know you guys all want to be a part of the hunt, but if we're going to make it happen, I can't have five people going in after this moose. So they're like, all right, we'll stay in the road. They were good with it. They, they understood. So that's that's actually they awesome understood. a testament they, to the group oh, really yeah yeah so i took the uh the hunter and the supper midi which was a father son and i'm like all right guys walk right behind me we're gonna go in on this bull and we're gonna find where he is so i'd walk every 20 yards rake and grunt lightly like it seemed like every other time i did it she would light up which means she's you know she's with a bull so i got to where i thought she was and then i heard her again way off to the left which I, I didn't think she'd move, but she moved. But we still had good wind. So I was like, well, I looked ahead down the strip and there was these two tall pine trees. I'm like, you see those trees? I'm like, we gotta get to those trees and they're ahead of those trees. So let's sneak down in there and we'll, we'll see what we can do from there. Yep. So we walked down through the three of us and we were, we were snapping trees. This was a, a cut over area. I mean, we're stepping on sticks, we're making noise, but I was grunting, raking and I was holding my scapula above my head like an antler, trying to sound like a moose, look like a moose. So we get in there, I'm looking, looking, nothing. I get around the corner and I see a cow stand up. And I have the client right behind me. I told him to hang on to my backpack. I'm like, hang on to my backpack. I'm like, you gotta be right behind me. I'm like, no you way, gotta, really? I'm like, I'm like, hang on to my backpack. I'm like, cause you gotta be right behind me. I'm like, you gotta be right behind me. I'm like, this moose could be anywhere. I know where I hear him, but he could be anywhere. So we come around the corner, the cow stands up, and I look beside her and I see half of his antler. All I see is half. He's looking away from me. And then I I grunted and he looked at me and I see both sides. And at this point I'm like, whoa, like this is a good bull. Um, yeah. So I looked at him, I'm like, good bull, 50 yards, he's right in front of us. So I stepped to the side, client looked at him, put the gun up, and as he put the gun up, the bull stood up, started to take off, and there was this big opening between two trees, and he shot the bull quartering, loud whack, just whack. The bull was wet, water went misting up into the air, it was just, and then the bull disappeared and ran. And the client's like, oh no, oh no, oh no. But I heard a thump and a gurgle. Yep. And he didn't hear it. I heard a thump and a gurgle. I'm like, okay, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. We're, so, in, we're in business now. Yeah, we're in business. So we were both jacked up. I'm shaking. He's shaking. He's like almost in tears. So excited that he just saw this ball. Got a shot on it. So I'm like, all right, guys. I'm like, let's take a minute. And I looked at him. I'm like, we need a minute. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, the ball could use a minute. But I'm like, let's let's calm down. Let's regroup. We'll go in after this thing. We'll look for it. And then. The, the hunter's son was right there. He was 10 years old. He was right there. He saw the whole thing. He was on cloud nine. That's awesome. So I'm like, all right, let's start looking for him. And the client's nervous. He's like, oh, I don't know where he went. I don't know where he went. Because it was all whips. It was maple whips, popple whips, like chest high. So yep. he could have been laying anywhere. He wouldn't have saw him. So I'm walking, looking, looking. I start making circles. But I saw where he disappeared. He disappeared behind a giant, there was this giant pine tree. That was the last place I saw him. So that's where I went. Started walking around, found a big stump, and I climbed up on the stump and I start looking and I see half his rack sticking up on the ground. Oh. And I didn't I didn't say anything. And I, I waved I waved to him, I'm like, come here. 
And I'll, I couldn't help it, but I was laughing and smiling. <laughs> I was, I had a smile from ear to ear. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. knew, he knew I found him. I didn't say anything. I tried, was trying to keep it low key, yeah. but I was excited because that, that was a big bull. So I bring him over. I look, I point at the antler, and he's like, "Oh!" And then he lost it. He lost it. He, he got to his knees, and he was like holding his face, like super. So we walk up to it, and he was as big as he looked when i saw him sitting on the ground that's so, awesome yeah. that's awesome and the, just super excited we walk up to him and they were just oh it was such a good moment like we had a great experience that's awesome where were they from uh north carolina north carolina so north carolina all the way up to northern maine they had uh they had hunted in maine before they had been on moose hunts yeah um, with other people but this was the first time they'd ever drawn a tag that was their first moose hunt for themselves yeah, well, so. well done, dude. No, I was. Uh, it was. It was a great hunt. Like I said, um, I don't take 100% credit for that. All the guys in camp, especially Tommy, give me a pep talk, give me advice. Yeah, I yeah, took yeah. the advice I heard. I took what I found in the field, took the advice from the guys in camp, and just took what I learned and just went with it. 100%. Awesome. And it, it worked out. I got lucky. Was awesome. that a plan A spot or what? That was my plan A. That nice. was, okay, I was according to the first day, my plan A spot was a bust. This this particular day was my plan A. And really? there was tire tracks going into the road and there were moose tracks in the tire tracks. And the only other tire tracks and boot tracks in there were mine. So I knew no one was in there. Yeah. So it was a plan A. I had the perfect wind, perfect weather, had the intel to make it happen and it, it just it all came together that's awesome i love it yeah what day of the week uh, you, thursday it thursday. was a thursday morning yep so day four of the six day hunt it was a day four and like the night before they were a little discouraged because we'd seen moose we had seen moose throughout the week they had a couple bulls come in that were 30 inches or smaller they yep um so thursday morning it was like a light switch yep it just turned on turned on yeah so this bull was uh 44 inches mm -hmm. and beautiful nice mm -hmm. nice pans yes. nice points nice dark rack beautiful. just anybody would have shot that yeah you know, I, I saw it it's a beautiful awesome. representative awesome main moose great job rice i mean yeah thanks it, it's uh it's interesting you know i'll say you know my hunt we had um you know i'll jump in here I had a great client. He had a sub with him, um, kind of a father-son type of deal, and they were great guys. Oh my God, they p positive attitude through the hunt, and we had a tough hunt. We really did. Um, Monday we didn't see any moose. No, it's a tough what? start. That's a tough start. We didn't see moose Monday either. Yeah, it was a t it was yeah. tough. It was tough, tough, tough. We and um, is that normal for rain or what? Not uh, necessarily. Not really. Because uh, is it, yeah. I, I'm a deer hunter yeah, yeah, primarily. Yeah. So that I, this is my third full week moose hunting. Yeah. So yeah. I'm always sitting in the stand when it's raining. Right, right, right. I tend to see deer in the rain. Yeah. Are, so are you finding the moose are non-vocal when it's raining or what? I didn't find them vocal, honestly. Um, when I think about the hunt and, you know, we were able to also get um, a bull Thursday evening, not one grunt, which was crazy. We hunted right. hard. We put on miles. Um, we just, you know, that's hunting. You know, yeah. sometimes you, yeah. you're stepping on them, and sometimes you're not. Yeah. And, um, but we uh, Tuesday we got finally got into some moose. We saw a few cows. We did some big hunts. Um, nothing really came together. Wednesday, um, we went into a piece and we're just listening. And had two cows light up right out of the gate. Just list, heard them calling. Yeah, organically, and they they were elated with that because they never heard that before. Yeah, you know that's, that's that's something we take for granted. I mean, right? Not necessarily. I wouldn't say take right. for granted, but we're used to. Right. So we hear that, like it's just like you know part of the job. Right. And then some of us never heard it. They're like, what is that? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, the, and these two cows were going, and I'm like, all right, we got to move in. You know, the chances they're alone are minimal. Um, so we moved into deep into this cedar just nonsense place and, uh, nonsense <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't have been there it's the only way i can describe it honestly just cedar nonsense and um alone she was just squawking just squawking looking for love yeah i couldn't believe it totally alone um and i had a helper with me um who David, he was awesome, absolutely incredible all week. And um, 
he was down on the road below us. We're going to do this hunt down through, way down there, and pick us up. Um, this will take us all morning, you know, because it was a pretty big piece. We were going to yeah to hunt and call, and um, we got down through, and he's like, "Were you just bull calling up on this hillside?" I'm like, "No, why?" He goes, "Oh man." An hour ago, there was a bull up there going absolutely crazy for like 20 straight minutes, stomping back and forth, grunting, raking. I'm like, of course it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're not there. <laughs> Benefits of a helper, though, huh? Right. You know, but gave us some intel. Um, we finally had him going, um, at least, you know, some indication, but uh, didn't make anything happen Wednesday afternoon. And uh, Thursday, we changed up a little bit. We went into a different area. Um, checked a few areas out, found some pretty good moose sign, and um, we decided to try this new spot. Tons of moose, tons of moose sign in there. No one up in there, kind of like what you were saying, Bryce. You, yep. No one had been in this area, and there was this um, overgrown road, and I uh, we're walking up in there, and it was like that um, selectively harvested hardwood. But the maple, like all the branches, like came in completely over the tree, over yeah. the road, I mean. So you're like walking underneath it. That's cool. And I stopped and I said to the guys, I'm like, this is like uh, this is like the cathedral of Maine right oh, here. You know, for good film. The, you know, the the leaves all colored and whatever. And I'm like, I got a, I got a good feeling about this. And um, we got up in there. I was cow calling along the road all the way up in this piece call move 50 to 100 yards call just a couple light cow calls and got up to this yard and i was going to hunt all the way up this ridge peek over the top and go to the back side of this clear cut that was the plan and i didn't get to my plan because i don't know 300 yards into it we're coming through this little yard kind of tall grass in it and as we're moving through the grass the wind of course was blowing in all four directions at once like it loves to do and um i heard a moose get up and run actually i think it was bedded just inside the timber and again it's thick leafy young hardwood regen you can't see yeah. seven feet moose gets up takes off running i shoot out a cow call and the moose stops like dead in its tracks and then I hear him coming, I hear it coming back. Like, not making a noise, but walking. And I can hear it loud. And it starts pacing back and forth in the woods. Yeah. Like, pacing, pacing, pacing. And I said to my client, I'm like, this is a bull, so be ready. And um, did one more light little cow call. He just emerged from the leaves. Yeah. And uh, 25 yards. I'm like, he's right there if you want him. And I no more than got that out of my mouth. Lay the hammer down. And um and we and we got him right there. It was awesome. It was only like four in the afternoon, four thirty, yeah. something like that. Perfect. Something crazy. Yep. Bryce, what time do you shoot yours at? Seven fifteen. In the morning? Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Bright and early. Yep. I was gonna say I was Sunrise, I was thrilled yep. with four PM because I didn't have to pack the whole thing out in the dark. Yeah, we were less than an hour from the truck. Fantastic. <laughs> out of the truck and bull on the ground in an hour. Best part of mine <laughs> could drive up the grassy road with the truck. 73 yard pack out. Yep. A dream. A dream. And um, it was honestly, it was, it was really special too because it was kind of a father son deal. And they're both law enforcement officers on the the permit holders like a, a marine like it was just it was such an, a privilege to kind of fulfilling huh yeah you know for for me as a guy to kind of you know i don't know, return a favor to those who kind of take on public service and that type of thing and um but yeah just a dynamite dynamite week overall um tough hunt challenging hunt but you know we we persevered even though it was our action was a little light and, and managed you know, when the opportunity struck, they, they made it count. And um, it was great. That bull ran 25 yards, 30 yards maybe, laid right down, done, the way the way you'd like it to be. Yeah. So, yeah. so Mr. Poland, why don't you grab that mic? Sure. Because Bryce and I managed to go <laughs> late in the week. 
you uh, you had different plans. Yeah, I went late into Monday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we drew it up. <laughs> yeah, it went well, man. It just worked out, you know. Yeah. Had a good client. Guy was awesome. He was awesome. He could just do whatever you want, walk wherever you want, go wherever you want. Right. And it was a one-on-one, -on -one, just me and him. So, yep. you know, we didn't have anything else to worry about yeah. except for each other. And the morning started off a little iffy. We didn't... I should backpedal a little. Stay tuned, folks, while we take a brief break for a word from our sponsors. Eagle Lakes boarding camps have been around since the 1890s. The camps sit on a 23,000 acre state reserve, surrounded by forest, loaded with wildlife. Cabins are rustic, bathroom, shower, full bar, great food. If that has to do with outdoors, hiking, biking, camping, hunting, fishing, we can do it. All I can say is, if you're looking to, to get away, Eagle Lakes Boarding Camps has what you're looking for. To learn more about the Eagle Lakes Boarding Camps, please visit eaglelakesportingcamps.com. And now, let's get back to the podcast. But we scouted Sunday, me yep. and one of the other guys. Dylan, you guys will hear from him in a minute. And uh, we saw this bull making a rut pit in the cut. I think you watched it. We happen. watched him, you know, urinating in the rut pit, filling it up, digging it out, doing his thing. Oh, that's Had awesome. two cows with him, and uh, so decided. Well, we're we're gonna go after that bull Monday. Nice bull, you know, respectable bull. And but the wind was lousy. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it was like an east wind or something. So it had to. We kind of had to make a plan that I didn't like. But I was, you know, gonna do it anyway because right. it involved having to come in from a side of that cut where that bull had made that pit that had a gravel road through, a drivable road through it. Yeah. So we started off that morning coming into that east wind towards that cutting, and just like you know, you would expect, the minute we got to the edge of that cutting, we sat there for a few minutes, weren't calling or anything. We were just glassing, looking around. You know, so, right out of the game. Right out of the game. So we, you know, just kept doing what we were doing, worked our way out to that gravel road. I had our plan B. We were going to go down and where we thought the, where, where I thought that the uh, cows had dragged that bull the day before, got down into that brook and, and we kind of milled around for a few minutes and continuously call, you know, calling with that call and we just kind of, we headed out, we hit plan B and C during the middle of the day and did mm -hmm. our thing and talked to my client and I said, man, we, you know, I, I really think we should go back in there. I think, I think we need to, we need to press that issue and give it a shot. Like we know he's there. We don't, that we know for a fact is a big bull hanging out right there. So let's just go for it. Right. It's Monday, you know? Right. Right out of the but, gate. Right. Let's try it. Yeah. So <laughs> we get back there we drove in this time a little bit closer parked a little ways back headed in on foot and as we're headed into that brook again so we're heading down the brook we get into our spot set up we were well Isaac was there later on what like 0.34 miles down in there or yeah. something like that yeah. on the road and then uh, so he had uh, brought some shooting sticks with him and he wanted to get those set up because he was tired from the <laughs> The middle of the day activities we'd put some miles on that day so i don't know maybe half an hour after that things had calmed down i'm like i'm just here we go you know what are you gonna do right except go with your plan so i started cow calling and man two, three minutes later bull grunts response you got a response yeah 300 yards away maybe and we were set up on the edge of a probably two-year-old cut that had some regen in it, but it budded. They had cut right up into a planted spruce cutting. You right. Know, they, had, they had planted spruce in it after they cut it a few years ago. And then behind that, there was another hidden cut, and that's where that bull was down in that back hidden cut that you couldn't really see from anywhere, including the roads that you could drive, which was helpful. Right. So, yeah, he lit up, man. And he kind of came in slow. He covered a hundred yards pretty quick, and then he kind of milled around down at the base of this 
planted spruce cutting and uh, I cow called a few more times to him. He started raking a little bit at that point. So, I mean, he was interested, but he was he was kind of creeping, you know. He mm -hmm. wasn't covering a lot of ground. It was probably like, at this point, I'd say it was six six ten probably yeah. so we're kind of running out of time you know i think 640 something was legal, legal, shooting. legal shooting time so right you could tell he was into it so i'm like you know what man we don't have anything to lose i picked up my shoulder blade now i didn't light rake i just started smashing trees like and grunting and making as much bull noise as i possibly could because i mean we're 50 yards from this bull's pit right. standing there sounded like a cow and a bull going at it you know and dude he blew up he blew up flipped out oh uh, he was challenged knocking those spruce trees rubbing them so hard from 100 yards away you could see the tops of the trees swaying back and forth and uh, what a what a oh what a yeah, hunt, what dude. what i would have done to been there with the camera and uh pretty much from there on i throw out a couple of, of moans here and there you know just subtle cow calls yeah but mostly grunted and raked and just every time he would rake one of those black spruces i'd challenge him right back just smack again yeah i just start smashing brush and grunting at him and he came in how hit, far uh like 20 yards broadside eyes rolled back ears back rocking his head back and forth Boom. Shot him. <laughs> shot him up right there, <laughs> man. That was that one shot. He ran 10 yards and tipped over. Wow. Mo Monday afternoon. That's nice. Yeah. So what's awesome. that feeling like as a guide? I mean, it, oh, does it great, feel like man. you you are the hunter? I mean, yeah. is, it the sim is it a similar feeling? Oh, yeah. I yeah. Think so. You yeah. do everything but pull the trigger, you know? That's, that's a great. great. That's a great question. I, I, I actually, I'd say yes. We were talking about this today, Eric, actually. Yeah. Um, the crew I think about the crew here you know we guide moose hunting because we love moose hunting you know and in Maine it's a lottery system you know you don't get drawn every year or family member doesn't get drawn every year so one of the passions about getting into guiding was the chance to reliably go moose hunting every year exactly you know yeah. I mean it's the only how else are you going to do it right you know right and so yeah no it, it really is um, and you know, man, that's the minute, but it's great. But the moments after too, like to be able to share something that you love and you're passionate about with somebody like, and he's, you know, my client had never done that before. Ever. Right. Right. And he was from North Carolina too, you yeah. know? So I North mean, North Carolina represent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's to up. see his excitement, like, man, there's nothing like that, you know? Yeah. How, how do you even describe that? Right. And I think too, I mean, it really often is a once in a lifetime hunt for people um, to get to do this. And there can be a little pressure with it. I would imagine, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Imagine. There's a lot of pressure sometimes. You know. we, I think we all put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We're not, you know, we don't want to be unsuccessful. Right. We, we want, for them, we want to be successful for them. Right, right, you know? right, absolutely. And, um, but it's, it is very rewarding when you can, uh, you know, when you scout your preseason prep, um, to have that all come together. For sure. Yeah. You know, I remember when you guys got back to camp, because, you know, we obviously get up here um, a few days before the season. We have <laughs> scouting before then, but you'd seen that moose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like right before the hunt. Saturday yeah, I mean, and Sunday. The first time we saw that moose until we killed it was 30 hours, 36 hours. Maybe. Wow. Tops. I think you should discuss the pack out as well. I mean, that was yes. one of the gnarliest the pack outs. Most epic, yeah. epic Cape Quarter pack out oh, job man. ever. Which part? The part where the thunderstorms coming in I in the distance. Just That's exactly start, the part I was start thinking Start at the of. beginning oh, and go right through it. Start and go through it. <laughs> man, so, well, you know, we do our... So, we, we did our pictures and stuff and, and all of that. And, you know, I went up to the truck to make the call and, and I told him I said enjoy this right you know enjoy this moment man I'm gonna be a little while right I can get hold of some people we're a little ways out here we're we're downhill so we gotta carry everything uphill the whole which is another out. perk of a guide service having people to help right, right? on call for sure mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah and you know he did and it was it was cool because when I got back like he was on the phone with his wife we were fortunate we were in a spot with phone service so he's making calls and 
and he's having a good time and and all that but yeah got it you know dylan and isaac showed up and we uh we got to work on it and as we're uh as we're cutting this you know getting this thing out packed up you can see a thunderstorm coming and, and a big one a big one and you could hear it and you could hear it oh, yeah. yeah and and it really started to get close as we're, we're nearing the end you know and we got the last we always take the head and the hide out last and right and as we're getting that thing on like we're knocking on the door here things are happening by the time we get to the truck i mean torrential downpour the third one of the day we got in the truck before it rained really hard but yeah man we got wet for sure so to put it in perspective what time is it at this point mm. uh i don't midnight we got to the trucks one o'clock we rolled back yeah in i mean here, i think dylan and like i showed that. up around like nine eight, yeah eight thirty nine yeah. yeah so we're talking a three four hour job yeah and um so i was back here at camp wrapped up from the day you know you guys had a you know a number of people up in there so it looks good and <clears throat> i'm uh i actually laid down yeah. in my bed oh yeah and i'm sending messengers you know you guys all set you guys all set and no one is responding and i'm watching the lightning and the thunder the thunder's <laughs> banging and the light i mean it's like light. Well, you were watching Boom. we were feeling it. yeah right. we were living it <laughs> and and the rain i mean i've i'll be honest I, that was the most intense I don't know if I've ever seen it rain any harder than that. I don't know if it can rain. We any just got out of there in that. time. Yeah, it, it wasn't like rain. It was just like a steady, like wall of water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it, was, like it wasn't no, even drops. It, yeah. yeah. Oh you, no. Yeah, it was and bad. <laughs> so I jumped out of bed and started driving up there. Um, because I was just like, what are these guys? You know. Did something happen? Did did your truck get stuck? I mean, right. there's enough. I swear we got five inches of rain. Yeah, you could slide off the road and did, stuff like that too. Did someone slide off a road? Yeah. And right. And then uh, Dylan's truck was stuck getting you out or something. You know, whatever <laughs> it was. Um, I know he drives a Tundra. It doesn't think it ever gets stuck. He's told me that <laughs> multiple times. But um, so I'm like hammering, dude. Like I just jumped out of bed. I'm like I can't sleep. I don't know where they are. And I'll tell you, I've never been happier in my life to hear someone's voice come across the radio. And it's like, yeah, yeah, we're coming. I'm like, oh, yeah. Thank God, because I got to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we weren't, we didn't really wrap it up till probably one o'clock like when we got everything put in, put away. And yeah, you know, it's a long night. Got back. Yeah. yeah. When you get to hunt Some the next day, it's long a long night. Nights, that's for sure. Yep. But. 15 and a half inches though gorgeous bowl beautiful yeah. gorgeous bowl you know and, he got and he then got the full experience like you know he got he got it all that's awesome yeah and then you got it opening day yep and uh we're able to help out with a lot yeah. of other projects around the upper for sure <laughs> helped us out big time yeah, yeah. big time yeah. for sure so awesome we're gonna make a substitution here bryce is gonna jump out we're gonna bring in our friend Dylan. Dylan, why don't you jump in here? Um, we're just uh, we're just doing a little recap of the week, sharing stories about uh, the first week of the season. But I want to actually transition to Isaac. Kind of Isaac, just kind of go through kind of your week and what you do and kind of what you're all about. You know, particularly with the kind of the content creation and that type of thing. So. Yeah, I mean, my, my experience is totally different than everyone else's, right? Right. I mean, everyone in the house is a registered main guide, been doing this a long time. Um, and I'm here to film, really. Like you said, content create. Yeah. So in my, in my personal life, I create YouTube videos. I like to deer hunt a lot, turkey hunt, stuff like that. But moose hunting is pretty new to me. Um, this is, I, I mentioned earlier, it's my third week. So I came up in 2020. That was my first time. Yep, I remember in that. this camp. Yep. Hunted with Nate Terrio for a week in September and then hunted with Ken Mayo in October. Mm -hmm. um, both absolute studs. Learned a lot. Had some fantastic encounters. Killed a couple good bulls. And um, so, yeah, like I said, here to film. Got paired up with Dylan. 
dynamic duo. We were hitting off right from the beginning. <laughs> the um, dynamic duo. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I'll, I'll let Dylan explain the hunt because he'll be able to do it much better. But the challenges that we were facing with, we had a bow hunter, which is unique for a main moose hunt, I think. Yeah, it's not very common. If you had to put it in a percentage, what would you say? Less than 5%? I'd of say main less moose than are five. harvested with a bow. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough task. I, I Yeah. It, I know very few people who have shot one with a bow. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I know very few people who have even, that it's even been something they've tried. Like, I really, if I think about, because there's people who like, you know, I'm, I'd like to get one with my bow, but I'm good with the gun. And um, they may even have a sub permittee who carries a rifle. So if they get that bull that's 100 yards away yeah. or something, they, they'll, they're pretty quick to drop the bow. But um, the hunter y'all had this week was like a true bow hunter. Yeah. Later, and, Tommy. And, you know, that, uh, it, that's diff- it that's makes, unique. Yeah, it makes for a tough challenge, absolutely. So the things that I'm dealing with, I'm trying to blend in as much as possible, right? I'm trying to be an absolute nobody in the woods right i don't want to be heard i don't want to be seen i gotta hang in the background i can't affect the hunt at all right you did fine on that <laughs> thanks buddy yeah i know you're you're very good right because I, <laughs> I need to let dylan do his job i need to let dylan put the the client on a bowl and the client needs to do his job and make a good shot and you know also be silent in the woods as well so it's a whole different host of challenges and then you got to worry about you know all your camera equipment when the rain comes keeping it all dry right being silent you got a lot of things that are metal with, right with camera equipment i've got dylan mic'd up he's got to worry about you know turning the mic on and all that type of <laughs> type of stuff yeah, that was new for me and language <laughs> and language. language yeah we didn't do good on that part we didn't get good on that excited. part yeah rightfully so but no we had a fantastic week and this is my third week in a moose camp and i experienced some things that were absolutely mind-blowing we put we put the our client on a bull uh three days in a row yeah and we started out bow. we started out pretty well monday through wednesday was, yeah we, you know we we didn't get the moose we wanted come out monday through wednesday but just to get the opportunity especially with a bow and i mean we had great opportunities yeah close encounters you know just how you dream the full show calling them in getting rake and grunting out of them yep. i mean it was just awesome so i'm there in the background filming all of it right trying to capture the moment the best as possible trying to capture all the emotions you know the leaves changing the colors the bull coming in i mean you're you're you want to put the viewer in the perspective of the moose hunter right and that's hard to do it is hard to do Mm -hmm. so it was a lot of fun i mean just we got some great footage and uh stuff that that you know anybody would be proud of and for me, it's a it's a crazy experience because I'm learning so much about moose hunting, but mm-hmm. I'm also taking a bunch of lessons uh, about filming during it all. So I'm learning a lot about in the future what I need to do, and um, it was tough. <laughs> it was tough. We had we had a hard week of hunting. We put on a lot of miles, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's fun. You got to go this where is, they are. This right. is this is what. <laughs> what you said perfectly it's it's an opportunity to get out there and do what you love to do and for me what i love to do my two passions are photography videography and hunting yeah so coming up here and hanging out with a bunch of dudes who are like-minded um, and being able to film it all and capture it all and show it to other people and have them experience it in the same way that we are it's it's a true privilege so. yeah i would say one thing that's awesome about you isaac is it is a team of like guides and packers and helpers but like just how awesome you like integrate into this group it's like like a core cool piece of it we're a bunch of like-minded people it's really easy honestly yeah you come up here and it's like hanging out with all your buddies right everyone's on the same page really and right. it's a and it's a fantastic camp to walk into and i'm very fortunate to um stumble upon this opportunity and be a part of something this great because something that we discuss all the time is how unique this camp is and the help that you know you receive from other guides like eric came in huge at the end of the week finding a, a crazy spot for us um where we went in and got an, an amazing opportunity at a giant bull yeah and that's something that doesn't happen everywhere no no it doesn't yeah and with that being said too isaac carried out half of my client's moves too right right oh, so you know it. right you know it. he's he's here as our as our videographer but 
man. Goes he's putting in the NBA work too. Um, yeah, he's putting in the work above you know? and beyond. And I will say, for me, kind of help having to like kind of manage this camp. It's like, oh, okay, Isaac's here. We're good. Like, like it's like a core team member. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Like you roll in, it's like great. Honestly, he's to me like I've never looked at him as anything different. But then part of the team yeah like, absolutely 100 percent the I whole time no know, question no question not, not, yeah that doesn't even cross and, my and mind. that's part of my experience as well right i want to come in and be a part of the hunt you know right. i want to i want to experience everything i learned so much from all these guys right yeah no nope, just absolutely. just about the moose hunt in general right on top of all the filming and stuff uh, it, it's good practice for me i'm i'm so young i'm still learning a lot i make a lot of mistakes so just putting in the time getting in the reps every day is, mm -hmm. is awesome so dylan walk us through your hunt i i'll so isaac you captured some awesome footage of this stuff oh, that's crazy we've been watching it all week yeah. just again <laughs> every day we come back we load it up and watch it and just relive it it's yeah, really cool you guys were into some awesome action so kind of walk walk us through that day by day so we had gone into a piece monday and uh i had had it an encounter scouting with a bull that we kind of had our eyes on yeah. you know we knew he was there and we wanted him let's add some backstory to this too this is a bull that nate terrio and i had hunted in the september hunt in 2020 yeah two years ago and um he's been named the farm bull and uh <laughs> so in 2020 we hunted him for i think three and a half or four days and um we had him at 10 yards at one point right and it just didn't happen it just didn't work out it just didn't work out we had two other opportunities at him as well and it also didn't work out and that's just hunting you know oh yeah so for me coming in knowing that we were going to be going back after this bull was so exciting and trying to capture that story in the same way mm -hmm. and, and build it into the previous years and um, all the backstory behind it was something that uh is a really cool opportunity so and there was some pressure you know going in after a bull that's already been hunted by you that's been filmed by you and trying to kill him is is tough and he, he owns that area it's a small piece of woods and he owns it so you're really walking into his bedroom right but um but yeah that's just a little bit of backstory on where we're going in yeah awesome. so we we had been after him and we had trail camera pictures of him this year so i had gone in we had a really rainy day the week before the hunt i mean driving rain so i kind of figured it'd be a good day to creep through the woods and just kind of see what i could find for sign mm -hmm. well I kind of got a little further in than I anticipated and ended up within probably 20 yards of these moose. Really? And the cow had jumped up out of bed and immediately started bellowing. And as soon as she let out a few bellows, I heard right behind her, oh, oh, just grunting right on her track. And I caught a good glimpse of his palms going through. I was down low in the cedar swamp and it was no question like, he was it was him right this was before the hunt you know so i'm excited you know he's in there so <laughs> first thing monday we're going after him right into that spot yeah and really monday and tuesday so we had a little rain monday morning but the wind was perfect everything was seemed you know really good we had got in and it just didn't it wasn't going exactly how we had planned so we pulled out in the morning decided we'd get back in the afternoon come at it from a different angle and we had gone in and we were real quiet. We snuck in, kind of sat on the edge of a, a flowage for the afternoon for a little while before we crept into where we wanted to hunt. And uh, we were just walking along and, you know, light raking here and there while we're creeping down in and a couple stick snaps and all of a sudden, whoa, right whoa, there, just grunt immediately. And this moose was coming. It came in and it wasn't the bull we were after. Yeah, we got a great, I think we had him we what, got range show. 17 we got yards. And, show. Oh, he put on the full show. 17 yards. Yeah. He, oh, came, in, the he came in raking perfectly, stepped into the, the client's window perfectly. Um, and you just, as a guide, I mean, that's got to be just day one. You're putting your client on a bull like that. I think a lot of people would have shot that bull. A lot of people would have shot that bull, but the it, client wanted something big. Yep. And, and it, um, it was Monday afternoon, so you know, you feel pretty good exactly, going into yeah. that. And, right. Yeah. Uh, right. We got the full show and he had got great footage. He had came in grunting. Well be behind him the cow started going off, you know, she was bellowing and he kinda turned around, he didn't really know what we were. 
he didn't get a good look at us and he turned around and walked back towards her and off he went so we let that go tuesday we had gone back in i believe in the morning and it didn't pan out so we decided to switch it up and i uh, went to a different spot for the afternoon and had gone in did some light cow calling some raking kind of sat in a spot for an hour hour and a half and then another bull lit up out of the blue you know a while later after we had stopped calling so we played him got him and uh he came into probably eight or nine yards from isaac and my so client close man so close some great Could footage smell his breath. again put the same just a great show on for us and uh you know at this point it's like you know we're getting the action it's just not the bowl yet so as a cameraman talk about an amazing first two days oh dude to stack some footage like that in the first two days that's you couldn't dream of anything better you're talking about being you know 30 feet from a, a rutting bull moose a large animal like, doesn't matter doesn't matter if it's a spike horn or a 50 inch bull that's right. exciting it, it I is can, i was shaking like a leaf when that on the first day when that bull came in <laughs> yeah i was shaking like a leaf that's awesome and it, i think you know what that helped us out a lot because it instilled a lot of confidence in us right mm -hmm. away right. on the yeah. first day it was like okay dylan dylan can get this done as a guide the hunter felt confident we all got in good spots i got great footage it was like the confidence right off the bat rolling into the rest of the week i mean we had a real flow going after the after day one yeah so uh we got out after tuesday night and then i believe uh wednesday we went back in the morning to where we had seen a bull we were targeting and uh we're walking in the field on the edge and uh actually i think isaac caught it first but we had heard some grunts right in the middle of this field right out in the open just oh, walking down the middle of the field and we're looking me and my client and isaac's behind us videoing he's already got the camera on the bull looking at it <laughs> i have them in the frame to the left mm -hmm. and the bull walking in the middle of the field and it was funny because the way that it was just crazy timing they were walking probably 30 40 yards in front of me and i was hanging back a little bit it, it's better like that i can hear better right um right and i can capture everything that they're doing and th that bull was coming up the tree line and they were on this uh this cut road and it just happened to be the right timing where they didn't see him and they were only probably 15 yards apart and they couldn't see each other and i could see both of them and i had them both in the frame and uh it was i think it was the same bull that we had called in monday yep so it was the same the same moose we had called in monday we got a real good look at him out in the open obviously we yep. had a good look at him monday too but it was cool to see him come across the field like that and he ended up going down into, into some strips and uh, right at first light yeah right at first light so we just kind of hung out and we were watching and then shortly after a, a smaller bull a little spike bull had come out in sort of the same pattern walked out and yeah laid down in the field for about three seconds and then stood back up out of bed and walked down in the same strips and uh just doing spike bowl stuff yeah yep just running around in there and uh so we didn't see anything else for the morning no cow calling or anything in there which was surprising yeah like but, you um, said very quiet week yeah you know overall even though we had moose on us consistently yep it's quiet yeah and then so uh wednesday night i think again we had switched up i don't think the wind was right for that hunt we had been doing in the morning so we moved out went to a different spot got down in sort of uh towards a low uh sort of towards a creek edge and uh just set up in some strip cuts and did a little calling raking we weren't really getting any responses so we we're pulling out of the area and on the way out down a winter road out comes a walk in a, a small bull again and uh, for anyone who's ever seen the, there's videos out there of, you know, trying to get closer to a moose in the open where you put your hands up and sort of imitate being a bull with antlers. So I had a scapula in one hand and I rolled my sleeve down and put my arm up with the other one. So it kind of looked like a paddle and I started grunting and doing the head sway walking towards him. And uh, he fell for it and came into about 30. 25 30 yards oh my god so, what a hunt so what a hunt. that's something that i didn't know really before coming into these moose hunts is the eyesight of a moose yeah yeah like i'd always assumed pretty similar to a deer a deer is very sharp with their eyesight but a moose is a little bit different yep they'll fall to those tricks yep. their nose you know obviously is very good like a deer and you know, their sense of being prey yeah i mean 
they're very slick they're very quiet for being such a big animal but their eyesight is something that you can take advantage of yeah so uh we had got up close and it was something my client had didn't really want so we uh you know i put my arms down he figured us out pretty soon and he took off and um we rolled into thursday and we had been doing really well at the beginning of the week and then thursday dried up we had we had one encounter in the morning with what we believe was a cow we caught a isaac and my client caught a glimpse of it i was off to the side i never saw the moose but just the way that it was acting we're pretty sure it was a cow wasn't coming out kind of didn't really see what she wanted um and uh the rest of the day we didn't hear a peep it was quiet didn't, dead quiet dead quiet didn't hear anything i mean Same. one of those days where it just shut off almost you know it's a right. little discouraging but we had had a great start to the week so mm -hmm. weren't really discouraged going into friday and then in the morning the hunt didn't really pan out how we wanted we decided to it was really cold Friday Back after morning. The farm bull. Yep, and uh, it cooled down a lot. Really nice cold morning. Went in, didn't hear a peep from any moose, which was surprising. It's the you first know? frost of this fall, huh? I think so. I, right? I believe, yeah, that I morning so. was. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so we decided it was one of those days where it was really cool in the morning, but it warmed up pretty quickly. Yeah. and I think we was 64, 65 in the afternoon that day. Yeah. So drastic temperature yeah, change. Yeah, 30 degree swing. And we decided, you know, we'll just go try a little float trip. <laughs> we got in a canoe, we did a little <laughs> river trip, and that was, that was a an experience. A little river trip is a good way to put it. Uh, yeah, a workout and an experience all in one. It's more like a beaver dam hike. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think they call those uh, a professional development opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> we learned a lot about ourselves I call that, that a workout. Trip. That's what yeah. I call it. We learned a lot about our character on that trip. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I would say that we earned, you know, we felt after that trip that it didn't go so well that we earned, like, you know, we put in this hard work, something was going to happen for us. Right. And that afternoon, it sure did. We got some great intel. We went into an area that we had, you know, we had some good intel from a fellow guide. He had some cows calling. The we fellow guide Eric, right Eric. here. The fellow guide Eric. So Eric comes steaming in the afternoon. Yeah. He's like, guys, you are not going to believe this. No sooner than we not got out of the canoe. Not going to believe it. We were, we just gotten out of the canoe. <laughs> so just, you just gotten out of the so canoe. So you just went through. Um, I mean, you got to be creative and innovative. And so you try this canoe thing and it was tough. Um, didn't work out. Probably feeling a little tired after that. Tired. Yes discouraged yes but you got to stay pot you know oh you got to try stuff yeah like it's it's a full week hunt yes and yes it is you can't be discouraged because it can happen in five minutes it yep. can happen in five seconds it really can it can turn around so fast yep and you just got to stay positive you got to keep carrying on and um as soon as we got out of that canoe it happened for us eric came down with some great news <laughs> Just and fired up. Just <laughs> like that, we had an afternoon hunt planned out. Yep. <laughs> so uh, we go, you know, we stroll over the spot. It was a little early. So I was like, you know, we're going to wait. We're going to ease our way in, listen for a while. The wind was good. We're just going to creep in. So I think we had probably got in there 3 30, 4 o'clock, maybe. Yep. We walked down some strips. Really? Got slow. to the edge of this black spruce bog, and I mean, just gorgeous beautiful right on the edge of a pond listen for a little while didn't really hear anything so i could see we had a nice easy walk through this bog i'm like we're just going to creep in keep listening so we had probably gone 75 yards and walked right up on a fresh pit and i'm like this is good yeah it's this on. is great yeah and within five minutes we heard a cow light up across the pond and she was going crazy i've never heard anything like I mean, it was like she would bellow for 15 to 20 seconds straight and take a deep breath and just do it again. Wow. It wow. was insane. So while she was doing that, it was kind of like, okay, she's there. There's going to be a bull somewhere around there. So we eased in to where we thought we were in a closer range, you know, to where we'd be heard. So she kept going and I did a little, you know, light raking, some grunting, just kind of creeped along the edge. And then uh, we had heard two grunts, and they were 
when we first heard him, I'd say a little over 100 yards away probably, mm -hmm. kind of straight in front of us, and just silence after that. I had grunted back, that was it, just kind of waited to feel it out in silence. He had shut off. And the anticipation going into this, I mean, getting the intel from Eric, yeah. you know, knowing that there's, there's, it's happening in there, you know? Right. Knowing that it's happening, we crept in real slow, hearing the cow light up early, I mean, the anticipation was insane. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we had kept, you know, kind of creeping in, creeping in, and uh, finally, some, you know, we heard some sticks break, a little more response. And I said, okay, that's good. Keep moving in a little bit, slowly, quietly. Break a stick back. We'd hear a stick break, and that'd be it. No grunts, no raking, nothing like that. And so, uh, Actually, Eric was behind us. I had him throw out a cow call. He throws out a cow call, and we hear another response. So I move in, and I start raking immediately. And then I hear more grunting. So we continue on, get a little closer. And I said we started in beautiful country. We didn't end up in beautiful country. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful, beautiful open area we were in. And for a bow hunter, that's pretty crucial you need to have you know right, right. you need to have uh, good lanes and you know good visuals you know line of sight and where this moose was was none of that <laughs> so I can tell you after watching the footage it's anything but that it was insane in there yeah I mean, I mean, you could only see for 10 yards yeah 15 yards was like max. as far as you could see max yeah it was thick yeah it was just nasty in there so we had got in and at this point we were in his area and he was really getting uncomfortable and he was starting to let us know he was grunting you'd hear a lot more aggressive stick breaks um he wasn't really raking a lot but the stick snaps and the grunting here and there it was enough you know yeah and uh we had got in and i kind of froze up thinking that like how do i play this we're not in a great area for a bow shot and actually, like, so I had two. My client, you know, was a good hunter. And Isaac, being there as a cameraman, but also a great hunter, we kind of talked it over together. And we're like, we need to just continue on. We need to get to a spot where we can have an opportunity. Right. So we pushed on. And uh, at this point, it's so thick, we're making noise. I mean, we're, we can't be quiet anymore. It's tough. It's too thick. It's like it's cedar, black spruce. Just chaos, Nonsense. blowdowns everywhere. I mean, you're stepping yeah. over everything, breaking everything. So but, we're moving, and I'm just being loud yeah. at this point. I'm hitting the scapula on everything. I'm grunting while we're moving. And uh, I'd say we get probably within 35 to 40 yards where we set up from where he was at. And he finally started coming in. Stay tuned, folks, while we take a brief break for a word from our sponsors. If you're looking for a world-class destination to go after big game or small game, look no further than OMM Outfitters. I'm Nathan Terrio with OMM Outfitters, and we encourage you to take a look at what we have to offer. Please visit our website at www.ommoutfitters.com and see what our professional staff has to offer and how we can create memories of a lifetime. And now, let's get back to the podcast. And uh, he came just to where you could kind of see him. No shot opportunity there, and he froze up. So I had to kind of move a little bit forward, and I stuck my scapula up in the air and was hitting some limbs high just to kind of catch his attention. Mm -hmm. trying like to visually. Pull. Visually, yes. Right. And, you know, obviously he's heard us this whole time, but now he sees this is where they're at. Right. So, I mean, he, at this point, he's coming. He saw it, and he's coming in straight on. And uh, I was a little bit further forward and to the left of Isaac and my eight, client. Eight, and, eight uh, yards off to our, like, yeah. 10 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Yep. And he comes in. There's, like, one, one clear path that the client has a good shot opportunity, and he's coming right down it. And... Uh, I mean, he's just coming in, like, head down, showing off his rack. and Swaying. He, oh, swaying. Just beautiful. And he's a beautiful, beautiful. And it, 
It is a beautiful bull. I oh. mean, just a tro like when you think of a Maine moose, it's a it's a trophy Maine moose. It was, yeah, it was no a gorgeous doubt. bull, no doubt. And uh, he came in and uh, he got within ten yards, I'd say, yeah. and he kind of figured out what was going on and he started doing the swirl. Yeah. Well, it wasn't an easy shot, and but it was one we had to take, and you right. know that's sometimes the way it goes. It's it's top it's it, hunting yep. at the end of the day. And yep. Unfortunately, it was not a fatal shot. Right. The moose, we followed him for a while. Mm -hmm. He had gone off and immediately had began raking trees again, and within thirty yards of where we shot him, he had begun grunt. He was grunting at us. Right. That's something I've never seen before. Which yeah. I mean, I don't think. A lot of these guys have seen anything like that before either it was you know not good signs and we could see it where the arrow had hit and it wasn't an area we you know right had hoped for but it was it was a tough situation and uh i mean we had the team out there and we were really <laughs> oh we, we were, put in an unbelievable did. effort and uh you know the thing was it was we were out there today um you know day after that and really I don't know, a half dozen, seven got I don't know, a big group. Um, and there's seven total? Yeah. Seven total guys. Seven yeah. guys yeah. out there looking, and it, it became very clear that, you know, a fatally wounded animal will run and lay down and, you know, whatever. This wasn't the case. No. This bull went about his rutting activity. He ran up to his rut pits. It looked like he was chasing cows around. He was raking brush. Yep. He went uphill frequently. Went uphill the entire time, I actually think. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think he went <laughs> uphill the yeah. entire time. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we, we got to a point where you know, there was you know, you see a little blood at the shot and then there's just, there isn't any. And um, you know, it was a pretty good bull so we could follow his tracks. Frankly, that's what we were doing a lot of the time a lot of the time like yeah the majority of the time i'd even say and it became very clear that this was not a fatally hit moose and um you know that's yeah. i i think we had gone when i marked it almost 400 yards from where the shot was taken in a straight line yep. but i bet we had tracked that moose oh. in his act just his travel yeah like over like close to a mile or more right he was just going crazy loops and doing all so you know running raking going checking pit i mean all over the place like right. it was pretty apparent that it wasn't something that you know that he was it didn't, going about his business yeah as a just, big bull he carried on he was the dominant bull and he just kept doing that <laughs> right and that's hunting you yeah. know it's it's a challenge um but I got to tell you, I mean, you know, what a hunt, though. The you know, experience to, of that was amazing. I you mean, know, Dylan being less than five yards from that moose, us being less than 10 yards from that moose. Ugh. Ugh. It was insane. You can't imagine Just, a, a near 1,000-pound animal being less than 10 yards from you. Something that can kill you. Right. I mean, and in, in a bull like that, full rut, grunting, Reagan just oh and yeah. the power of these animals i mean when after the shot after he'd figured us out he mowed down trees running out of there trees yep. bigger than my thigh were yeah. completely pushed over yeah. yeah yeah when we when we looked at that like the love's like oh my god look at this thing um you know but um you know there, there's highs and lows with all hunts and and um but I really think you know that whole hunt was was an exceptional one. You guys did an awesome job. You really did. That was um, the footage you got's insane, and, and watching that bull come in like that, I can't imagine what that was like for you. No, it was crazy. Yeah. I don't know if I've been able to top it yet. That might be one like of the a, crazier experiences. I mean, it was unbelievable. Yeah, and like Truly. we had said, that's something that the client they're not going to be able to take home the meat in the in the rack and get it mounted, but taking home the experience is something that will never leave him right will never leave us either and i think a lesson for that too i mean a lot of people you know the the moose hunt's a once in a lifetime thing it's a bucket list thing and and um you know there are challenges it's hunting you know it's it's hunting it's not killing and um focusing on the experience and the memories you build on these hunts really is critical because that someone may find themselves not leaving with a moose and that doesn't mean they don't leave with one of the greatest experiences they've ever had yeah you know well, well, and I, th I i think 
you know, y'all definitely had one of those this week. And, um, you know, weather plays a key part in that, and you can't control that. I don't care how much scouting you do, how many trail cameras you have, how many roads you drive, how much walking you do. You can't control the weather. You can't control wildlife. And you talked about the highs and lows. I mean, we hadn't, we hadn't even dreamed up of this spot going into Friday. I mean, we didn't know it was it existed. there, frankly. And to go in there and like just, un, I mean, how many rut pits did we see? 30. We were looking 30. I found 30 rut pits with, in there. With, within a 100-yard radius? That's insane. I've never seen anything like that And that, that was that on my one life. side. And right. The, on the other side in the Black Spruce, that was where we found the first few. I mean, it was just you unbelievable. You that area over And, there. you know, it's you, you can't get discouraged because right. within a few minutes you can stumble on something like that and it just changes the entire week. You, you could find that on Saturday and not have seen a moose and all of a sudden it's on, you know. You see seven in one spot. Right. It's just, you've got to stay positive. That whole thing unfolded in four hours. All yeah. Yeah. From, 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 from you finding, finding it. it. Yeah. From, yeah. Like, from nobody being in there to all that going down was four hours. Yeah. Give or take. And I think the lesson for that, for anyone, you know, going on a moose hunt, planning a moose hunt, and I... The area that I killed on with my hunters this year um, was new to me on that hunt. Yep. You know, we, I, I mean, I kind of knew the general vicinity, but uh, my helper knew that area and we talked about it at lunch. I said, all right, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to walk that road. Walked in there. Boom. Yep. You know what I mean? And oh, so, yeah. you know, to anyone out there, maybe you were, you know, you're on your hunt, you've gone two days, you, you know, you haven't seen a moose, it's a challenge. I think a few th key things are, number one, the hunt is not the same on Friday as it was on Monday, especially during the moose rut. No. I mean, it unfolds hourly. It truly does. It can change. Yep. And just because you scouted an area and it had tons of sign, it warms up midday, the moose aren't moving a ton. Go check some other things out. You know, you may find that that area you never had been in before <laughs> that you're like, this is the greatest moose hunting spot I've ever found in my life. Dude, the, truly. The I mean, of I, out of that canoe all sweaty and Eric coming <laughs> bombing down the hill. Listen, guys, we've got a crazy spot. That's awesome. Unbelievable. But, dude, that's also like, that's the team, too, man. That's why I love this stuff here so much is you're tagged out on Monday. You know, your job is done so to speak but you're out there pounding your feet knowing grinding. that knowing that grinding. you know your brothers Earning are it. out there still guiding doing what you can do to support them to help them make make them successful and that's that's what i love so much about this stuff man is it's just and it's across the board i mean it's yeah. every team member is just phenomenal and everyone's looking out for everyone else right I mean, yeah there's no shortage of help everybody's looking out for everyone else's best interests it's awesome you know the team really is key and i think we come back to this podcast after podcast and you know going on the, you know whether it's a moose hunt or whatever hunt you are but i think particularly a moose hunt your team you assemble like especially if you're doing your own thing needs to be additive to your experience they need to maintain a positive yeah. attitude in the face of challenge because you might get a hunt where the weather sucks and the moose aren't moving and they aren't talking. Are those people going to uplift spirits or make them lower? And I've seen hunts where they can make them lower. <laughs> and, um, you know, you need an additive group of people to support you um, and your goals and, and help push to make that successful. And, uh, and that's certainly what's been going on this week. Man, it was a, I, I can't, you know, it builds and builds and builds and then it's just here. You and, then it's gone. and then it's gone. And then it's the gone. The first two days <laughs> felt like a year. Right. In yeah. the last four or four I agree with I've never had a hunt where the first like two or three days felt so like long, but in a good I mean we had great days, phenomenal days. Yeah, we did. We really but then did. the last few days just like it flew. Right. It yeah. really felt it, it was strange how up front it felt so drawn out and then on the back end it just was gone. Yeah. It blew right by. Yep. Yeah. You know, I think another lesson you know, I took away from this week was like be in the game as much as you can the whole time. Um, you know, Ben was here earlier and, and he was, uh, his client got a, a nice bull Friday afternoon. Yeah. And um, 
we had gone up in an area there were three or four of us had gone up and checking some area doing some walking um looking at some spots to try to you know just kind of what you did with dylan you know find that that card to play so to speak and um i had uh driven it drove in to check a road system and i was going in to look at a spot and on my way in i found the smoke and hot ball track running right down the gravel road i mean right right there you gotta love that and i'm like oh my god this is like this just happened you know what i mean so i pull over and i'm walking the road walking the road and i thought you know what i'm just gonna shoot out one little cow call i shoot out one little cow call <laughs> nothing <laughs> 80 yards away, bowl lights up right there. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, I actually didn't want, I wanted, I was hoping to hear the one, you know, 500 yards away, you hear that faint grunt and right you can there. try to get on an in reach or, I don't know, meet up with someone to let them know. Bowl's right there. I managed to get a hold of Ben. I'm like, you got to come up in here and check this out. Dude, everything wrong. Like, the wind's horrible. I'm standing out there on the road. My truck's parked right there. Like, it was just, everything was wrong. <laughs> and um, they came in, and they got assembled and did a hunt, called up through this piece, and, and they didn't get it. Um, but then, kind of later in the afternoon, they were, like, having a snack, relaxing a little bit. And they're like, all right, let's get out of here. We'll head back to the truck and maybe go try this other spot. And then they were kind of, it was two in the afternoon on Friday. It was like 65 degrees, high sun, bluebird sky. Oh yeah, yep. we were pulling a canoe over beaver dams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I got a suntan that day. I mean, I, exactly, so did I, so did I. <laughs> Moose don't move in those conditions. Or do they? Or do they? They're eating, th hey, look at that right there. Here comes this beautiful, bowl cruising down through the selective hardwood oh, yeah. smoking hot bright sunshine yeah. and i was on one road system and i was going to go up and hike this winter road and check it out ben comes across the radio hey chris you there i'm like yeah what's up he goes i got a secret for you i'm like no way <laughs> Yeah, you better head up here right now. It's hot. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> and so, you know, it was, and so I just, you know, share that as, you know, encouragement, you know, because, you know, by the time this podcast comes out, we'll have wrapped up the, uh, the September and October 2022 20, bull seasons. We'll do a recap also of the October season at the end, like we are this one. Um, but, uh, you know, I just want to congratulate you know, all the hunters this week that were out there. You know, we hope that you, really just had an awesome experience time with your friends your family whatever it was and um and really enjoyed your time in the woods you know in pursuit of you know what we think is the greatest animal on earth the mighty moose so with that you guys have anything left to to share for the listeners out there no just great week and yeah it was awesome spending it with the team chasing, it was. chasing moose around absolutely if you're getting into filming learn how to use manual focus <laughs> okay <laughs> Yeah, that's my lesson learned. Pro tip. That's, that's your lesson learned this Man, week. <laughs> don't rely on autofocus. Oh, yep, awesome. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. It's uh, it's a blast. We're here at camp, celebrating the end of the week. We're getting ready for the October season. Really looking forward to the uh, the next group of hunters coming in. To everyone out there, be well, take care, and God bless. <laughs>